all right, let's have some fun. Let's just have some fun with arithmetic in this 10 attic system. Uh, let's do this for example. Here's the number, what we said was one third, plus the number negative one. So we should get out of this the result to one third, take away one, negative two thirds. So let's do it. Um, addition problem, seven plus nine is 16. 16, great, I'd write 16, but six, but 10 explode, kaboom, extra dot there. Um, one plus six, uh, oh, 16 again, 10 explode, one dot there. 16, 10 explode, one dot there. 10 explode, boom, boom, boom. Huh, one third, take away one, should be the answer, six, 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 forever. This must be negative two thirds. But actually, we can see it's correct because literally it is one less than what we started with. If I said take away one from this number, I would actually get six at the end, not seven. So it's just doing the correct thing. So I can play with arithmetic and get curious, fun, and correct results. Actually, what could be more interesting is take our fraction one third and multiply by negative one. So we should get the answer being negative, uh, negative one third. All right, how am I gonna do that? Well, I'll, I'll do long multiplication. Uh, seven times nine is 63 in the units, and then it'll be seven times six is 54 in the tens, and, and sorry, nine times six, and then nine times six again in the hundreds, 54, and then nine times six in the thousand, 54, then nine times six in the 54, 54, forever. Let's multiply the first nine. Next one will be multiplying by 90, so put a zero at the end, and do this work again. Seven times three is 63, and then a 54, and then a 54, and then a 54, and then a 54, forever. And then do it again. This is in the hundreds now. Zero, zero, and another 63, and a 54, and a 54, and a 54, and a 54, and do that forever, and do all that forever. Okay, my handwriting is completely screwy, but let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, 63 plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, I got 63 units. All right, 63 units, screwy. Uh, 54 tens, 63 tens, and then zero tens, zero tens thereafter. So that's what, uh, uh, 117, that's 117 tens. And then 54 hundreds, 54 hundreds, 63 hundreds, and then zero hundreds, zero hundreds there forever. So what's that? It's uh, 108 and 63, uh, 168, 100 and, um, 100 and, um, thing me dog, <laughs> 171, and so on. Okay, 63 units. 117 tens, 171 hundreds, and that's all I've got the patience for right now, but what's gonna happen to some explosions? 63, kaboom, six explosions leaving three behind. Makes this 123, leaving three behind, extra 12 there. Extra 12 makes this uh, 193, three behind, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. You'll find, if you have the patience to do this more carefully, more neatly than I am, and longer than I am, it's nothing but a set of threes. Oh, one third, times negative one apparently equals this. It must be negative a third. Wow, does that seem right? Could I believe a whole bunch of threes is a negative a third? A whole bunch of threes. The claim is that's negative a third. Well, if I multiply it by three, if it's negative a third, I should get the answer negative one. Do I? Oh, triple everything. Nine, 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 forever. Yes, it is negative one. This thing times three equals negative one Yes, that really is negative a third. So actually the arithmetic here is consistent. Um, I could just see what the answers are or I could do it the complicated way and still get the same answers. This is great, this is brilliant. Except there's one very serious flaw with this 10 attic system. And let me show you what can go wrong. There's something that actually is deeply flawed about it which annoys mathematicians. Now if I think about it, uh, five times two, we know that's 10. And in our multiplicative thinking, that's a number closest to zero. Actually, five squared times two squared is gonna be 100. That's even closer to zero. If I did five cubed times four cubed, uh, two cubed, excuse me, would be 1,000. That's even closer to zero. The higher power of fives and the higher powers of two I go, I'm getting answers that we get closer and closer and closer to zero. Now, there is actually a way to, in some sense, do an infinitely big power of five in this weird system, and an infinitely big power of two in the system, and when you multiply them together, you get something that's so close to zero that it actually is zero. Now, I can't write in the full number here, but try doing something like um, the infinitely big power of five. We're gonna write this, I'm running out of space. Have it up here, We've got room up here? I think so. Uh, something that ends three, one, two, five, but it keeps going. So, it turns out that infinitely many powers of five that end in the five, 
So infinite many of the ends in two five, infinite many of the ends in one two five. So I actually can construct a number that deserves to be called an infinite power of two. And if I multiply that by uh, eight three two, there's a, a power of five, sorry, and a power of two. The infinite many powers of two that end in two. Actually, the infinite many that end in thirty two. Actually, the infinite many that end in eight thirty two, and so on. I can construct this and now do this long multiplication. So I'll do it the same way I did here. I'll do double everything first. So I get 10, 4, 2, 6, and then off I go. Then I'll be triple everything, but I'm 10 higher this time. So it'll be 3 times 5 is 15. Uh, 3 times 6 is uh, 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, 3 times 8 is 9, and so on. And I'll multiply by 8. That's in the hundreds place, so add some zeros. 8 times 5 is 40. Uh, 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 1 is 8 and keep going, and then I keep doing this forever. Now you can kind of see what's going to happen. I will get 10 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, 10. 0 explode, extra dot there. 19 plus 1, 20. 0, 2 explode, extra 2 dots there. 40, 8, 50. 0 there, extra 5 dots there. Uh, 16, 19, 25, 30. 0, 3 dots over there, and keep going you can prove that you get nothing but zeros. So in this 10 addict system, it is possible to write a non-zero number and another non-zero number which multiply to be zero. There is something that's non-zero times something that's non-zero whose answer is zero. This seems like a flaw of this arithmetic. In fact, ordinary arithmetic does not have this annoying problem that when you multiply two non-zero things together, you get zero. That seems very strange and actually anti-intuitive. The problem was that 10 is a composite number, as I used the fact that it had twos and fives going on. Mathematicians have proved if you start with a non-composite number, don't do 10, do it with a prime number like 11 or 13 or seven. Do seven attic, do 11 attic, do 17 attic. You'll never run into this problem. And then it truly becomes a beautiful, consistent arithmetic system that mimics all the properties we expect of usual arithmetic. It just seems weird to our intuition. But it's based on a multiplicative type of thinking of how the number line now works, and that too creates a beautiful, self-consistent number system. Beautiful stuff, but you have to go with primes.